and welcome to another episode of my 100 day to prosperity journey. I'm so glad that you can join me today. Um, I am going to be talking about another installment of the secrets of the millionaire mind. I'm going to talk about the way that we get our programming. But before I do that, I wanted to uh, given aside, um, last week we talked about what we could learn from Ocean Ramsey, and I told you about you know my panic attack and my heart um, pains, chest pains, and everything that I was going through. And so I wanted to actually give you an update on that and tell you uh, a little bit of what I learned from it. So what happened um, a few Fridays ago, I guess it was last Friday, um, I was having chest pains, I was having anxiety attacks because I had so much work that I had to do and um, it was the Martin Luther King uh, holiday weekend and I was behind, I didn't have all of my um, stuff together and so I was feeling stressed, okay? And I it had exhibited itself physically and I felt sick all Friday and um, I really wasn't feeling it and Tuesday I woke up and I had a tremendous um, workload upon me on that day and I got up and I went through that day and I realized I had no chest pain all of that stuff that I had to do it just came naturally and that um, scripture in Matthew 6 that says that each day has enough trouble of its own do not worry about tomorrow it came to my head and it was like wow I was sitting up here stressing and you know having panic attacks and chest pains over an issue that was supposed to happen in the future and I went through it and yes it was a tough day but and there was a threat that I was going to have chest pains and that I was starting to feel the stress and the anxiety and I was starting to get labored breathing but I quickly turned that off and I said you know what God's got this I'm gonna give it to him and he took care of it I mean just one thing after another after another everything worked well together everything worked together and it was a it, what could have been a horrible day turned out to be a great day well it wasn't great but it turned out to be an easy day for me and so that just put into my mind so clearly that stressing about the future is not where it's at stressing about things that you can't control is not where it's at stressing about things you can control is not helpful it's not going to help you okay worrying is not going to help you and one of the declarations that i say is that you know i will focus on the thoughts that will empower me. I will entertain the thoughts that will empower me. And I realized I wasn't doing that. I was sitting there and stressing about something that I could possibly control if I st stayed up all night and, you know, got no sleep and dealt with it. Or I could put it in God's hands and let Him deal with it. And He did. It was beautiful. It was a extreme testimony to my faith and I hope that helped you out too okay so what are we talking about today today we're talking about the different ways in which we get our money blueprint okay we get it from three different ways okay the first way is verbal programming and verbal programming just means what was said to you about you around you about money okay what were the things when you were growing up that you heard dealing with money? You know, like money doesn't grow on trees or, you know, all rich people are greedy or, you know, um, I'm not made of money. Um, all of those different things that we hear basically become a part of us because we take it and we internalize it and it becomes our fact. And that's how we live life and that's how we are programmed to think about money and so when we think about money that way we can't keep it because we're steady thinking okay I'm not made of money 
money's not really important. And if you keep saying long enough, money is not really important, then money's not going to stay with you. I think T. Harv Ecker did a awesome job when he said, um, if you have a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend and you tell them that they're not important to you for a long enough period of time, they're not going to stay with you. Okay. And it's the same thing with money. What you speak is your power. And so whatever you say, whatever you think is what will give power and what will manifest into your life. Remember the inside, um, creates the outside. What is inside of you will create what is outside of you. And so whatever you say and think is what will manifest in your physical world. And so instead of believing that money isn't important, it is important. It is a tool to help you get to where you need to go. It's just, an, it's just as important as all relationships and love. However, you need to prioritize what is, it, what is most important for you. And money isn't, shouldn't be the most important thing, but it is important, okay? So stop saying the money's not important. It is important because it's what will help you be successful so you're not stressed and um, doing all of these jobs and not being able to be successful and live your best life, okay? So it is important, but it, it needs to be put in its proper context, okay? The second programming that we have is um, what was done as far as money. Um, what were the experiences that um, we saw according to money? Um, how were your fam How was your family about money? Were they savers? Were they investors? Um, did they spend it as soon as they get it? Um, what was the mindset behind it? And I think this section hit me the most because it talked about how um, husband and wife are about money and when they get together how their money blueprint can affect and color their um, their relationship and so with me you know I I am one of those type of people who I can put off my pleasure and my gratification until I have my money in place and be successful enough to get uh, what I really want. And what I really want is freedom. I would rather have freedom than to get, you know, a new pair of earrings or the nicest pair of shoes or even a brand new purse. It, uh, you know, all of that doesn't, that material stuff doesn't matter to me. You know, a brand new car or a house, all that stuff doesn't matter. What matters to me is being free, you know, not having to grind and work hard at something that I really don't want to do. That is my number one goal. And anything that gets me closer to my goal, I am on it. <laughs> like white on rice in a snowstorm on a paper plate. Okay. That is how, you know, stuck to that my goal is. My husband, on the other hand, you know, he works very, very, very hard. And so he takes the money that he works hard for and he buys the things he wants to buy. And that's the way he does things. And granted, I think other ways of how we should do our money. But, you know, every so often he has to have a new toy. You know, he has to get his new motorcycle. He has to get something else. He has to buy something that he wants and will, will enjoy. And, and sometimes that causes friction. <laughs> because I'm thinking, you know, I want to be free and you causing all this and you causing more debt. And he's like, well, you know, I want to buy what I want to buy because I work hard for it. And because of our programming and the way we were programmed and the way our family thought and taught money or didn't teach money, that's how we grew up and believed that our life should be. And so here I am, I want freedom, here he is, he wants his toys, so what are we going to do about it? Well, you have to find a new way of coexisting, and the relationship has to have its new way of, um, a, new, a new money blueprint for the relationship, something that y'all can actually work together to do and work out to do. And so basically at this point, I'm like, you know, he buys his new toy, he can afford it, whatever. I am, you know in this mind frame paying off debts yes that's my dog back there paying off debts and everything and I'm gonna get to my goal too and so 
we're, we just have the same idea. We're just going back. We're going about it in different ways. He'd rather have fun now. I say I can put it off till a little later. I can sacrifice a little now to get really what I want later. And so, you know, we have an understanding about it now. So we're, we're cool. You know, can you get your little toys? You know, don't ask me what I want. I don't really care. I don't want anything. You know, give me some, give me some clothes, you know, from the goodwill. I'll be good. Okay, <laughs> so the money blueprint, that is the, the second way, is the experiences that you had around it. And the third, third way is specific incidents that happened to you. Um, was there something that happened that colored your money decision? Like, did you come across you know, a mean rich person? Okay, and so you now believe that all rich people are, you know, Scrooge. All right. Um, or did you come across, you know, your family and how they handled um, or how they treated you when you asked for money? You know, when you asked for money, were they kind of your standoffish? Were they generous with their money? You know, and that can color how you are. You can be generous with your money. Or if you felt that what they did was so extreme, so strict, they either saved all of their money for, you know, what they call a rainy day, which is not good. And I'll talk about that a little later. If they saved and hoard all of their money and they wouldn't let you get any of it, then, or they spent all of their money and they didn't have any money to keep the lights on or, you know, put gas in the car, or you were always struggling because they were always spending money on frivolous stuff. The other side of the coin is people become rebellious and if they feel that their childhood is so extreme what they're going to do is say you know I'm going to be the opposite if you you know hoard all your money I'm going to spend all of mine okay if you you know spend all your money I'm going to save all of my money because I never know if I'm going to have enough because you know my parents always did all of these things and so you need to think about you know, why do you do what you do with money? You know, what experiences did you grow up with? Are you saving for a rainy day? And honestly, that is a bad term because what I remember what I said, words are power and whatever you put out into the universe, whatever you say will become your reality. So if you are saving up for a rainy day, guess what? All you're going to have is rainy days. Okay. All you're going to get is the car being broke down, you know, you need to fix up the house, you know, you need to pay for some expensive, unexpected thing that comes up every month because you're always saving for a rainy day. But instead of saying, I'm saving for a rainy day, say, I am going to save my money for a great day. I'm going to save my money for a vacation. I'm going to save my money, you know, to party hard when I get financially free, you know, yes, you know. Save, my, save your money for, you know, retirement. Save your money for some celebration. You know, use the tools of positive law attraction to bring positivity your way. And you will get the things that you want sooner as opposed to later, okay? So think about what your money experiences are and don't allow them to color what it is that you are doing in your future because what you say what you think how you act will all come together and create your physical environment whether for good or bad and so you want good things to happen to you so make sure that you put good in the atmosphere say good things about money believe good things about money and good things will come to you okay so I hope you got value out of this content. I really do. Um, I hope that you got the book. I hope you're reading the book. At least listen to it on YouTube. It's free, people. And leave some comments about it below. I would love to hear your thoughts about it. Also, if you feel that I'm giving you good content, make sure that you hit the like bu button and sub sub ugh, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell. I'm giving fresh daily videos every day and I want you to be in the know. And if you want to know how I'm going to fire my boss in 2019, I want you to hit the description link. It's going to be the first link in the description. I want you to join me on my journey. I want you to be 
financially free just like I want to be financially free. Okay? So, until next time, my friend, make sure that you think big, dream big, take action to own the life of your dreams. Bye now. <laughs>